Okay, welcome back to the hybrids. In this hybrid, I'm going to take a few moments to show you guys how to convert a conceptual slash logical diagram into a physical diagram. Uh, the difference being uh, a logical diagram just shows the tables um, and the attributes as applicable. Um, however, it doesn't show anything with data types, anything like that. The physical shows the actual final naming, including following naming rules that kind of stuff. Also it shows some of the stuff um, such as synthetic keys or surrogate keys depending on which terminology you want to use um, so that it avoids issues with possible renaming of things. Now I'm going to start creating my new diagram. Since we use Postgres I will select an appropriate version of Postgres right there 9.5 and away it goes. I'm going to grind for a moment here. Once again, I hit the little new diagram icon up here. All right. So on the left is an explorer, a window explorer, object explorer. We don't really need any of that for the time being. We need the design area. So I'm going to close this tab. Actually, not that tab. I'm going to close this. So we got the whole design area to work with. Now. A few of the items we need to work with is, for example, this is the entity, this is the relationship. We're going to work with those. So I'm going to drop an entity for employees. And of course, the window pops up elsewhere. Just like that. And we're on the attributes tab. It might be hard to tell in the recording, but this is where we're at. We're going to add a new attribute popping up all the time in the wrong place and we're going to create one called ID because according to what I taught you guys ID is always the primary key uh, we're going to pick a data type called big serial because big serial is designed to be specifically um, for auto incrementing it's what they call a metadata type uh, I covered what that does in class but in case I didn't there's the explanation it's a big integer that also auto increments and creates a sequence. Therefore, it's a big serial. That is a Postgres specific data type. And I accidentally turned it on as a primary key by default. But since we're doing a primary key, we got to make sure this one's checked off. And you go OK and add because now we're going to add the name of the employee. And it's just going to be a var car, uh, character varying, actually, in this case. And we want to give this, say, 75. We want to make sure it's mandatory, so you want to mark it as not null. And hit OK. Now we've got these two. And now you can see we have an employees table with an ID and a name. We I did forget to put on the national identification number or a national insurance number. I'm going to add another column. I'm going to call it NIN and it is a character varying of 20. That one's also required. We could hit OK. And I want to move it up one just so that it's in a reasonable order. Although the column num valid order isn't important, it's still handy to have them in a given order when you have a chance at the design stage. Now I'm going to create another entity for hotels. I'm going to add once again our ID column, which is a big serial. It's the primary key. OK and add hotel location character varying say 50 I'm not sure so we're gonna give it a little extra room and in this case that should also be not null why because otherwise it, the information is totally useless without it um, now you'll notice that I not did not put in hotel number because essentially hotel number is just numbers therefore it's the same thing as the primary key at the end user stage this will look 
identical to put a label on it called hotel number on the application but they're going to be remapping the ID the reason we couldn't do that with NIN is because the NIN is a number that is has real-world meaning and therefore when it has real-world meaning it's known as a natural key and the values are set from an external source etc um, the only problem is with the NIN is same thing problems Canadian SIN numbers and American SN numbers when there's identity theft your SIN number may change therefore it's not guaranteed to always be true therefore we moved on past that okay I'm going to create another entity I'm going to call this one contracts I'm going to add an ID again big serial primary key and hit OK hit OK now notice I only added one column in here that's because hotel is a parent of contracts and contracts will inherit hotels primary key in order to do that I'll do a non-identifying relationship click on hotel click on contracts and now you'll see that it dropped another column in here called ID and it's gone green here the keys because it's a foreign key however you can't have two columns in the same table have the same name so we're going to rename that newly created column to hotel ID and now when I put my mouse on top of the line you'll see that it's highlighting the ID and the hotel ID down here with the relationship being highlighted also and that is what that table needs now we have one more table that we need to add and this one is going to be the hours table and again you should always have a primary key even if it's an associative table um, there's two ways of handling this and I'll show you guys the first way and then I'll explain some of the issues with that method and then um, I'll show you the alternative way first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my first relationship which is the employee ID like such hit OK hit OK now we're going to add our second one which is going to be our contract ID like such okay now we need to add our hours um, I'm gonna make this one a numeric X Y and it's got a precision and a scale the precision is a total set number of digits allowed to have and then the scale is how many decimal places so I'm gonna make it a four by two and they have to enter hours so this means they can, they can put enter up to 99.99 .99 hours okay so so far I've got a table that's connected to two different other tables here's our associative table and you can see parent child parent child many one to many now what we need to do however is we're going to make a few changes in here for starters we want to make these not null and we also want to make them mandatory foreign keys so that means that they are not only not null they're also part of the primary key and now you'll see that it's turned blue as opposed to being red red's primary key green is a foreign key blue is um, a foreign key that's part of the primary key now these have turned into not quite identifying relationships but these this cannot be created without one of these this is pretty okay it's completely valid as far as database design theory goes however there are some challenges with this um, notably 
uh, when you're doing searches, you got to do searches for hours, and you have to always know the employee ID and the contract ID. Therefore, you have to have two pieces of information coming in. You can find all the hours for a given employee, and if you, but however, if you want to modify some of their hours, you have to know which contract you're modifying, and whatnot. And it can be a little bit extra challenging because of that. Um, one of the alternative solutions you'll find for this is to add a, its own surrogate primary key like such. I'm going to move it to the top just for I just like having my primary keys at the top of the table and hit OK and now you'll see that these are foreign keys. It's entirely possible to um, still identify them easily by employee or by contract. But now we can also target a specific row in this table. Um, because there's resolves one of the issues. The issue is this. What happens if an employee put in hours twice at a given contract? There's no way of knowing if an employee put in hours twice. So they did 30 hours and then they later went back in and did another five. And maybe the contract requires that they have their hours broken down by number of visits, that kind of thing. Um, to be able to resolve that also, you have to get a little creative with some of your data. You may need to add a date, date type in here, um, that kind of stuff. However, now that this is all not null, it works great. The only thing we might want to make is make some changes to the relationship. You can see it's non-identifying, but it has a mandatory parent because you shouldn't be able to create an hours entry without an employee. I'm going to give it a name while I'm in here. Same thing with this one. The parent is mandatory. That is contract hours. And again, the parent's mandatory in this one. And this one is um, hotel contracts. And that's that. Just like that. Now, when you take a look at this, there's one more reason the labels are in a weird spot. I think that's just this diagramming software that did that. Here is our conceptual slash logical. Here's our physical. It all has appropriate primary keys. The naming conventions are all been followed. Um, they, they all have real data types with explanations for the most part. Uh, now you can go answer some questions from the hybrid.